The sinking feeling is too familiar. When a shooting occurs, parents have to figure out a way to talk to their children about violence. In light of what happened to former President Trump, we're joined now by psychiatrist Gerald Shiner with steps parents can take to handle these very difficult conversations. Thanks for being on with us this afternoon. Thank you. So first and foremost, how do you think parents should go about explaining violent events to their children when their kids see pictures or videos, the impact that can have and how we can counteract it a bit? Well, I think the important thing is parents have to initiate the conversation and parents have to ask their children, did you see what happened? What do you think? And then the part that we can impart, that we can communicate to kids is that these incidents are rare, uh, they don't always happen, that there are always people on scene who know what to do, and there are always people there to protect you. Uh, and then they have drills at schools, so you can secure yourself in a, in a schoolroom or a classroom, find a place to hide, find a place to run, look for adults to help you. Uh, and those kind of concrete instructions can help kids feel safe and feel secure. The other thing is bringing it up and talking about it uh, will also help kids feel secure because they won't initiate a conversation and they won't tell you that they're afraid. They'll show it or they'll say they don't want to go, but they won't come out and say it. So it's up to the adult to initiate the conversation. As a nation, I feel like we seem to be a little desensitized to violence just after repeated mass shootings, random attacks. Uh, do you find that aspect of it troubling, that they're just becoming more common occurrences, so these conversations uh, may not feel like they need to be at the forefront as much? It's really counterproductive if you think about it. Well, I, th I think you're right. And, you know, I work at a hospital and we see more gunshot wounds at Sinai Grace Hospital in Northwest Detroit uh, and uh, and at Receiving Hospital uh, than, uh, than, than you might see in wartime. Uh, and the results are devastating. So we do get used to it and we take it for granted. Uh, summertime with a hot summer, where there's uh, uh, there, there are news cycles that talk about political dissent, people are arguing with one another, and then you see gunshot uh, firearm incidents at uh, block parties where people are supposed to be enjoying themselves. Uh, and the news marches on, and we hear about it so often uh, that we lose our reaction to these horrific uh, experiences. Uh, I think that's why you have to raise the issue with kids because it's easy to gloss over it. Something happens in the morning uh, and by the evening news cycle, you know, it's a little sidebar and uh, and you don't hear much. But these are horrific things. People are hurt and families are grieving. So I think we have to bring it up. We have to talk to our kids, uh, whatever our politics are, whatever we think about firearms. We have to tell kids how to be safe. Certainly. We talk about anxiety more than ever now. What warning signs should parents look out for in their kids? You know, maybe they've been impacted to, by this more than they thought or anticipated. Well, if, if kids are worried or anxious, you'll see that they withdraw. They won't want to socialize. They might not want to leave the house or go out to public places with you. They'll sleep poorly. They won't want to go to bed. They'll ask for a glass of water, ask if they can stay up. In bed, they'll tell you they're, they're afraid and they might come into parents' bedroom. And that's when you have the talk and that's when you have to bring up this means that something's bothering you. And uh, I wonder if it doesn't have something to do with what happened today or what you heard about at school or what happened in the block party or what you saw on television. So the kids, kids lose their appetite. They're afraid to go out. They don't want to sleep alone. Uh, they get grouchy and irritable with their siblings. Uh, and there are more fights or more violence. Those are all signs of kids who are experiencing anxiety and they're experiencing fear. And it's up to parents to notice it, ask about it, and be reassuring. And the weight you put behind that, I imagine that's the time to consider getting a specialist involved. Dr. Schneider, thanks so much for being on with us this afternoon. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.